I wanted to talk about troubleshooting fire pistons. A lot of people seem to have trouble getting these to work. When I got my Wilderness Solutions Firelight, I was having difficulty, so I started doing research and ran across a lot of videos of people using them. Noticed, you know, the same procedure going on, and I started doing, uh, you know, a little deeper research on the history and found some videos of people in Asia making them and using them and noticed that their procedure was more obvious and then it hit me it's the procedure that's important that's the key thing and understanding how this works is also a key part of you know having success this works by a piston compressing oxygen causing friction and heat enough to light tinder in the end usually char cloth so to get this to work, all your ducts have to be in a row. So the first thing is, I was cleaning that out. I'm going to shove a paper towel in there again, a clean one, just to make sure I get all the gunk out. And I know this video might be a little slow, but I just wanted to go through the procedure that if you go through, you should have success with this. And I just noticed, I just stopped thinking about it and just started going through the steps. And my success rate, you know, is much, much higher. I still have more trouble with this one. I can get this one to work every time now with um, just the simple steps. Just gonna get in there. You can see that there's some gunk that's really not wanting to get out of there. So I'm just gonna twist this really tight and just shove. You can actually get this shoved in there pretty well. I'm gonna just twist. In there, most of the gunk came out. So I'm going to talk about the procedure in terms of uh, the traditional peoples that I saw because, you know, their fire pistons were probably way more finicky than these. And by looking at their procedure, if it works on a primitive fire piston, it should work on a modern one. So that's the first step is making sure your tube is clean. Another thing I noticed is they would blow into the tube. And initially, I thought that was to clean it. So I didn't pay attention to that step really at all because I thought, well, the tube is clean, so I don't need to blow it out. I just ran a paper towel through there, right? But what they were doing is actually putting oxygen in here. And if you use this and you get an ember and you, and you take out the piston, there's not going to be any oxygen left in here. So if you try to use this again, it's not going to work because your oxygen's burned up. So that's why they blow into it. <laughs> That's to, you know, get the, you know, oxygen back into the tube. With modern pistons, you know, with this one, I just take the valve off and I just suck through this hole and suck the air in. Okay, that way I know I've got oxygen in there. And that's the key element because that's what's getting compressed. That's what's heating up and causing the ember. So a step that... I was missing while watching some of the modern guys use these. I figured out by watching you know, the traditional peoples and understanding how it works. So that was a key thing for me, at least, in getting this to work. The next thing is they were using a sinew and not an O-ring, but they would spend most of their energy and focus on the O-ring, getting it to be exactly even. And we don't have to worry about that because it's even but you do have to make sure it's clean. So I just wipe it off really well. And don't use too much char cloth. It's, you don't need that much. You just need a little piece. You can shove it in there. Now this does not hold the char cloth very well, so it's a little bit frustrating. This one holds the char cloth much better, but again, this is not a comparison, it's just a troubleshooting. So this one, you got to pack that char cloth in really tight. And then I'm going to wipe the o-ring down again. And notice that I put the tinder in before I put the lubricant on. And again, I picked that up from watching traditional people do this, they would get that tinder in the end, they would make sure that was nice and secure, see it's still kind of falling out, get that tinder in there first. 
then wipe off the o-ring again and then do your lube last so if all those things are in place you've got a clean tube you've got oxygen in there you've got a clean o-ring you've got lubricant on the o-ring this should work if you bang it you don't have to even bang it that hard when I first got this my hands were sore because I was banging so hard because I kept thinking that was what was missing but what was missing in a lot of cases was I was getting this to work I could see the smoke in there and I'd keep banging I couldn't get it to work and it you know dawned on me that ah if there's smoke in there there's probably not much much oxygen and that's when I realized that's why they the Indians were blowing into it it was not to clean it it was to get that oxygen in there so you gotta have oxygen in the tube because that's what is going to heat up. You gotta have your tinder packed in tight, lubricated o ring, everything's gotta be tight. And if all those things are in place, this should work. Now I did not get it to go, so I'm gonna look. The tube's got some gunk in it, but it should be okay. I'm just gonna wipe down the o ring again. And you know, this was the procedure that I picked up. They would if it didn't work, they would go through again, you know, making sure that this is clean. So I'm just going to try to bang out the gunk, blow into it, lube up your o ring again. And like I said, this Wilderness Solutions is much more finicky. I can't get it to work nearly as often as the Numeth Vulcan. Alright, so I'm just going to try it again. Alright, so I got a little ember going. I don't know if you can see it. So that's how you get these to work. You've got to go through the procedure and literally just, you know, imitate the people online that are using these. As you can see, this is dirty. So what I'm going to do is clean this out as best as I can, clean the o-ring, and then get it all lubed up and ready to go for the next use. So that's the key. You've got to have a clean tube a clean o-ring, oxygen in your tube. That's one thing that can throw you off because you don't think about it. But you got to have oxygen in that tube. Like I said, you can take this valve off or you can blow into it. And if all those things are in place, then it should work. If it doesn't work, then you got to clean out the o-rings, you got to blow out the tube, get the tube cleaned out, get oxygen in there by blowing if you don't have a valve. And you just you go through those little steps again and you should be able to get this to work.